This telescope mount is an Orion Atlas EQ. It's the older model. It doesn't have all the advanced electronics with GoTo and stuff like that. But the basic stuff is still the same. So I'm going to show you quite a bit about it. Show you how to set it up and how it works. For starters, this lock is for right ascension, also called RA, and it's just east and west. So this tracks the rotation of the earth. So this works on like a 24 hour clock. If, it was, if the motor was running it would take 24 hours to go around a complete circle, which of course you can't do because the horizon gets in the way. And then over here, have another lock. This is north and south, or declination. As you can see, it rotates this way. Now here on your north, south, or declination, notice you have your setting circles. It goes from zero to 90, and does it multiple times. 360 degrees in a full circle. And what it amounts to, zero is considered the equator, and 90 would be the pole, like since I'm in the northern hemisphere, up by the North Star Polaris. Now my other setting circle is right ascension, and here Instead of 0 through 90, you have 0 through 24. So this is like a 24 hour clock. So this tracks the uh, star as it goes across the sky and you actually enter your right ascension coordinate based on what the object's coordinate is. I can show you how that works too. That involves using a map. What it amounts to is this is adjustable with a couple little set screws here and every evening it's a little different. So let's say you point at a known object like a real bright star. Let's say you find Vega and you know its coordinates. After you have it centered in your telescope you get on here and you set it to the same clock time in hours and minutes and then you tighten it up and then when you go to another object you can find it much easier now this scale here is where you set your location or your latitude in my case, I'm in Indiana, and I'm around 39 degrees. Now you can see this isn't exactly on there, but this label is just a sticker. And they don't have it exactly precise, and plus, maybe I don't have it exactly level. So it's off by a little there, but when I got the polar alignment correct, I was able to lock it in. And since I keep setting up my telescope in the same spot out in my driveway, it's good. All I have to do then is adjust my east-west position when I set up the mount. So when I'm getting my polar alignment, this axis right here is what needs to point towards the North Star approximately if you're in the Northern Hemisphere like me. And there's adjustment screws here. And what they're doing is they're just coming down and pinching this. If you loosen them, this will go up and down and move the, you know, from zero all the way to 90 if you want. And you set it where you're at, wherever your location is. And then you can fine tune it from there. And that sets your latitude part of your polar alignment. Now when you're setting your east-west position, you start off, since this is pointing north, 
you're going to have a line going from east to west across these two front legs. In case you've noticed, I've got some marks down here. This is just duct tape. I've marked my spot the other night when I was correctly aligned just by putting duct tape down. And then I sprayed some black paint on there. And I'm going to set the tripod legs on those. And that gives me a quick reference so I'm almost polar aligned in just a couple seconds. Okay. So when I come out with it, first thing I do is just set each leg on the black dot that I've got. And my east-west position is really close. It's within a couple of degrees. It's not perfect. But if I was just doing general viewing, especially with low power stuff, it'd be just fine, especially as I've already got my north-south set up. Because like I say, I keep using this in the same spot in my driveway. Okay, now if you remember, I showed you these two screws here for setting your latitude for north and south. There's two more screws, little thumb screws, one on this side and one on this side. And I can use them by loosening them up. And it'll rotate the head east and west. And you can make fine-tune adjustments with it. You can loosen one just a little and then tighten the other and just move it like you know one thread of a screw at a time to fine tune it and you can do the same with your north and south you've also got a little bubble level in here to kind of get your telescope approximately leveled which is a good idea now each tripod leg has a little adjustment. This is just a little locking lever. And these legs will slide out quite a ways, probably a foot and a half or more. Now in my case, I leave them almost all the way in. I've got this one leg here out about an inch or so because my driveway has a slight tilt to it to help it drain away from the house. Now this particular scope mount has a polar scope in it, a little cap here, and a little screw off cap. And you have a little miniature telescope in there. And this is for helping you fine tune your polar alignment even more when you're looking at Polaris. So this just helps you track the stars more accurately. It becomes a lot more important if you're trying to do photography. Now here on the north side of the scope, you see there's a little hole here. Well inside the housing has a hole in the part that spins too. When you rotate your declination here, and I had to put a hole in here in this mount so that you could actually see through the polar alignment scope because otherwise it would have a big piece of metal right in front of it. So you have to rotate the head so you can see through it. So if you look into your polar alignment scope and it's all black, you know you have to rotate it to line that up so you can see. As long as I'm on that subject, if you happen to have a mount similar to this that offers a polar alignment scope as an option but you don't have it yet, you can still take advantage of this. You can look through the hole it won't have the centering device or anything, but you can look through it and try to see Polaris, and that'll at least give you an idea of where you're pointed. And then you can always fine-tune it with drift aligning, which will be a separate video. It gets a little involved. Now, once you have your scope approximately aligned, start putting it together. You should always put your weights on first, here on your shaft. See, I just bought a little dolly here for about 30 bucks, and I keep mine in a box, and I use that to transport them around. These things, in my case, these weigh 11 pounds each. It's just an easier way 
to transport them around. Put them on, got a little locking screw. I've got three of them for this particular scope. So I'm going to have 33 pounds about of counterbalance weight. And then the telescope itself weighs about 30 pounds before I start putting stuff on it. This mount's supposed to be able to handle about 40 pounds of payload, as they call it, telescope, eyepieces, cameras, anything you put on it. And when you're finishing that, you've got a little thumb screw here. You put this on. This is just a safety. This is called a toe saver. This way if one of these weights comes loose, it won't fall off and smash your foot. Now in my case, I know from experience, I can put mine about a finger's width from the bottom for the telescope I'm using. And I can always fine tune it. But this gives me a good spot to start with. Now before I put in the actual telescope, I'm going to put in my dovetail, which is this bar, and my tube rings, which hold it. This just makes it easier to put in. Some telescopes you get will just have a dovetail like this mounted to it, and you hold the entire telescope and everything and put it in. Now in my case, this is just easier. You put this in, Make sure the dovetail is nice and flat in there. And you really snug up these two thumb screws real good. And you might notice I've got a lot of tape. I've marked a spot as a reference to help center this up. This helps me when I'm balancing. I've got one for my 10 inch Newtonian that I'm going to put on here. And next, I have to open up the rings. So there's more thumb screws up here. And I'm kind of pulling back just a little on this. I'm just avoiding getting the screw into the threads of both because each piece of this tube ring has threads in it and if you have the threads in both at the same time you can end up stripping them out so now these are open I can lay the telescope in the cradle close the rings back up tighten them and then we're another step closer This part weighs about 30 pounds for my scope. That's for a 10 inch Newtonian. This whole thing, when it's all set up, is supposed to weigh around 115, 120 pounds.